What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Today we're talking our must own offenses for 2020 fantasy football. Basically, these are the offenses that you want to buy stock in because they will have multiple, not one, not two, possibly three, if not more, fantasy viable and high end fantasy viable options at that on offenses that are going to be explosive, highly potent, and ultimately have many opportunities for scoring, which will equate into fantasy success. Having said that, quick reminder now before we get into it, for all those interested, check out the 2020 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Also, check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. You can get access to all this content and more along with purchasing a copy of the 2020 ADP Draft Guide online there. All the details in the description. Check us out now. Great value at a great price for the Draft Guide. Top 150 overall players in standard PPR formats, individual player bios, tiers, projections, along with breakout bust candidates and general advice. And also, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe. But for now, let's get right into it. We kick off our list with none other than the reigning Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. And anytime you've got the best quarterback in the NFL in Patrick Mahomes, this is where you have to begin. Because not only is Mahomes the best quarterback in the NFL, he's also arguably the best fantasy football quarterback. Him and Lamar Jackson, they are in a category by themselves. Pretty much the type of guys where we catch up week in and week out, they'll get you 25 plus fantasy points every single time. That's why you see them being drafted at the end of the second, early third round. But let's look at the pass catchers on this team because this is where it gets interesting. At wide receiver, you've got another top end fantasy option in Tyreek Hill. Top five potential there in standard and PPR formats. Sure, he's a little bit more suited for standard scoring because he won't get you as many receptions as let's say a Michael Thomas but he's got that high ceiling like no other in fantasy football and in the NFL he's got electric speed one of the favorite targets of Patrick Mahomes and we've seen it before in a matter of two quarters he can have 30 plus fantasy points just like that as far as the other wide receivers on this team, you know the name, Sammy Watkins, Mako Hardman. They're more so complimentary pieces. If we have to highlight a name, it would probably be Hardman. He showed us some really nice things his rookie year, showed that potential. He's got a trending upwards type of arrow. Might not be this year, but a breakout is coming for Mako Hardman potentially in 2021. Let's also not forget about Travis Kelsey, however, because at tight end, he is the number one fantasy football tight end for the last couple of years, and he's pretty much a wide receiver in a tight end's body. 1,000 plus yards, pretty much a lot for him every single year, around 90 receptions as well, five to seven touchdowns, a reliable target for Patrick Mahomes, especially in the red zone. And then you get to the running back. You get to the running back situation. Sure, it might not be as prolific as the names we've gone through so far because Mahomes, Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill are all top five in the respective positions, which is insane that all those guys are on the same offense. But Damian Williams or Clyde Edwards Alaire. A lot of people are assuming it will be Clyde Edwards Alaire that wins out the starting running back spot. Sure, that might be true. We do believe that he will be the top rookie scoring fantasy running back uh, but either way whoever emerges as a top running back on this offense has you know low end rb1 type of potential if not higher because of how prolific and how potent this offense is for that reason it could end up being a sleeper position at running back either way though from start to finish, this is an offense with top five talent for the most part at every single position, which is why we love the Kansas City Chiefs in 2020. Next up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons as we go to our favorite division in fantasy football this year, the NFC South, maybe spoiler alert a little bit, but the Atlanta Falcons have got everything you could possibly want. They have got a top end quarterback. Sure, he's not the elite of the elite like a Patrick Mahomes but he's in that next category 
afterwards because Matt Ryan only a year ago in 2018 finished as the number two scoring fantasy football quarterback just behind Patrick Mahomes. Last year was tough. The offense didn't quite click. A lot of injuries on the offensive line. So that entire team kind of struggled. But what stayed true to the Atlanta offense is that they continued to air it out. They continued to attempt a bunch of passes. And that spells out a lot of opportunities for Matt Ryan, who airs it out with the best of them. He's got an MVP under his belt, so you know he can get it done. He's going to be one of the league leaders probably in passing yards, top five type of guy when it's all said and done at the end of the year. But when you look at the talent around him, you start to see why this offense is so successful. You've got Julio Jones, a top three fantasy football wide receiver across all formats every single year. You know that at the end of the season, he's going to be one of the league leaders in receiving yards, right around 90 receptions as well. But then you look at Calvin Ridley. There's so much depth on this team, especially a wide receiver. After Julio Jones, you've got a Calvin Ridley who has got that Chris Godwin type of breakout potential this year. We've been telling you guys, he, even though is going right around the fourth, maybe early fifth round, he's still somewhat undervalued. He has got top 10 fantasy football wide receiver potential here, folks. And if you're worried, can the Falcons sustain that? They absolutely can. Matt Ryan is good for around 300, 400 yards passing every single week. Calvin Ridley should be able to break that 1,000-yard receiving mark as he continues to close the gap between himself and Julio Jones. But it doesn't end there because you go to the tight end position next. Sure, no more Austin Hooper, but you look at what Hooper was able to do last season because during the stretch of the season when he was healthy... Well, Austin Hooper was one of the top tight ends in fantasy football. Sure, Hayden Hurst, the newly added tight end, might not have that same ceiling and with a healthy offense fully, might be third in the pecking order, but he still does have some nice breakout potential and you can get him late at a bargain and he could break into the top 10 fantasy tight ends, which at that point, when you're that late in drafts is all you can ask for. Again, in terms of situations and environment, it's a perfect one. So we would buy stock in Hayden Hurst as well. And finally, we get to the running back situation. And this is another great situation as well. Sure, there's no more Devonta Freeman, but insert Todd Gurley instead. Now, Todd Gurley is an interesting running back. We still view him as a top 15 fantasy running back right around there. A mid to low end RB1 pretty much across all formats. And just because the LA Rams didn't want to utilize him last season doesn't mean that that's what will happen here. On a one-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons, we believe that they will get their money's worth from Todd Gurley to see what he has left. But last season, he sure seemed able to handle the load. It was more so of a situation of a bad offensive line from the Rams and a refusal to use him as that workhorse type of running back. And we know he's a great pass catcher, so he can do that. We know he can run between the tackles. So we anticipate some pretty good success from Todd Gurley. Sure, those days of a top five fantasy running back are probably behind him, but he has still got between a top 10 and top 15 fantasy running back upside. So for that reason, we are also very high on it. Todd Gurley. Pretty much from start to finish, again, the Atlanta Falcons are an example of an offense that you want to invest stock in. They're going to be putting up points with the best of them. They're in a division in the NFC South that you're going to need to put up points versus your divisional opponents to win. So we love the Atlanta Falcons in 2020. Staying in the NFC South, we go to the New Orleans Saints next. And this has been an offense that has been extremely potent for several years and we continue to expect that that'll be the case in 2020 as long as Drew Brees is under center. You've got Brees and Sean Payton, a hell of an offensive combination. Brees is another one of these maybe under the radar type of fantasy scoring quarterbacks similar to a Matt Ryan but we know he can get it done pretty much every single year regardless of age he gets you right around 4,500 yards he was on pace to do that last season before his injury and he absolutely lit it up during his return 
And when you look at the wide receivers around him, specifically one Michael Thomas, you start to see why. Because Michael Thomas, regarded as the number one fantasy scoring wide receiver across all formats, especially PPR, he's been getting better every single year. He just broke the reception record in 2019. Sure, there might be a little bit of a dip in production, but we still expect Michael Thomas to be easily a top five fantasy wide receiver in 2020. But a lot of people have been saying, look, the Saints don't really have a number two wide receiver. They haven't had one for a while across Michael Thomas. Well, what did they go ahead and do? They added Emmanuel Sanders during free agency. It'll be interesting to see how much Emmanuel Sanders has left in the tank, but he's arguably the best second wide receiver opposite Michael Thomas that the Saints have had in recent memory. He's more of a PPR type of suited wide receiver. We'll see how that gels with Michael Thomas, who is the king of that category. But still, Emmanuel Sanders should be a really nice option for this New Orleans Saints offense. And we think he could end up being a reliable wide receiver too. And considering where he's being drafted right now, it's a bit of a situation where he's being undervalued. Then you go to the tight end spot because Jared Cook was a great breakout candidate last season and he finishes a top 10 fantasy scoring tight end across all formats. Jared Cook really excelled towards the end of the year, dealt with some injuries here and there, but he was a great red zone target for the New Orleans Saints and we know that he's got the experience let's say if Emmanuel Sanders does struggle we know that Jared Cook can pick up the slack so again you've got top 10 tight end potential on this New Orleans Saints offense as well and finally we get to Alvin Kamara and Kamara is a top five fantasy running back especially in PPR formats sure he was disappointing last season missed some time but in PPR formats, he was still a top 10 fa fantasy running back. That's why we're so high on him. And especially this year where his value is a little bit lower than it should be outside of the first top five picks. So we love the ability to get him with that sixth, seventh pick potentially. He is probably the closest thing skill set wise to Christian McCaffrey that there is in the NFL. He is one of the best pass catching running backs out there. The Saints love to throw him the football and he's extremely electric. You've got Latavius Murray behind him, who's also shown that he can get it done if something happens to Alvin Kamara. Either way, whatever happens in this running back backfield, whether it's Kamara, whether it's Latavius Murray, if one has to carry the load while the other is injured, you know that you're going to get top five fantasy running back potential from either one of these guys. So for that reason, we love the running back situation in New Orleans. Again, from start to finish, this is an offense that you want to invest in for 2020. Next up, we've got our third straight NFC South team here in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we weren't kidding when we told you we love the NFC South offensively in 2020. And with Tom Brady in town for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you can see why. I mean, even last year with Jameis Winston under center and him throwing the ball to the opposing team, what seemed like every other play, this was still an excellent offense, especially at the wide receiver position. And we expect that to be the case in 2020 again. Tom Brady is one of these quarterbacks that struggled last season. Maybe a lot of people think his best days are behind him, but this is arguably the best group of pass catchers offensive talent that he has ever had in his entire career and that's scary to think about the price tag isn't all that high in tom brady right now so we like the potential value him and bruce arians should be extremely intriguing as far as combinations are concerned we know that bruce arians will absolutely green light his quarterback to air it out and we still believe that tom brady can deliver a great pass whether it's 10, 20, 30, 40 yards down the field. And from there, his wide receivers will do the rest. And speaking of the wide receivers, you've got two top 10 wide receivers across all formats, fantasy-wise, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. And we really believe the separation isn't all that much. We personally prefer Mike Evans a little bit, but either way, both these guys will be excellent fantasy wide receiver options. We believe both guys are wide receiver ones with high ceilings, over a thousand yards, close to double digit touchdowns. And we think that both of them will be a lot more consistent compared to last season when we saw some 
you know, down games, down weeks when Jameis Winston really struggled. We anticipate a lot more consistency in this offense with Tom Brady under center. Then you get to the tight end situation, and there might not be a team that's more spoiled at tight end than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. To some extent, for that reason, maybe you avoid that position, but you've got the names in Rob Gronkowski, you've got O.J. Howard, and both those guys are extremely talented. Also, let's not forget about Cameron Brait. He can get it done as well. We just really have to see how all those guys are utilized, but if it was just one of those guys, they all have the potential to be top 10 fantasy scoring tight ends. That's why it's so intriguing. If anything, it just further raises Tom Brady stock. Now, the last position here that we have to talk about is the running back situation. It's a little bit of a question mark. You know, Ronald Jones is still there in terms of a veteran presence. The Bucks also spent an earlier round draft pick on Keyshawn Vaughn, who a lot of people are comparing to a David Johnson uh, running back that really fits Bruce Arians' system. But we don't quite know what will end up happening there, who's going to control that backfield. So we need a little bit more time to see how that will play out, maybe closer towards the end of the preseason. But there is a lot of potential in this backfield if one of these guys can run away with it because we know this offense is going to be putting themselves in a lot of scoring opportunities. They improve the offensive line in the NFL draft as well. So we really like the upside. Right now, it's a little bit of a question mark at running back, but there is low-end RB1 written all over this. And don't be surprised if one of these guys, before the season starts, wins out the running back spot for them for their ADP to absolutely skyrocket. So keep that in mind. Continuing on, we have got the Arizona Cardinals, who are a bit of a younger team, but they are absolutely loaded offensively. It starts with the quarterback spot here and Kyler Murray. He did some really nice things his rookie season, and we anticipate that he will improve his sophomore year as well. In fact, many people have him labeled as the next Patrick Mahomes, next Lamar Jackson, basically that next young quarterback that will break out in a big way and help you win your leagues potentially and that's why you're seeing him be drafted for that potential as potentially the third or fourth quarterback off the board in mock drafts and we think that he'll solidify that role once we get closer to the start of the season but on top of that he's got some nice upside as a rushing quarterback between 400 500 yards to potentially salvage a week as well kind of raise that floor on a week-to-week basis but you look at the offensive line, it was improved during the NFL draft. You look at the pass catchers, and boy, was that improved during free agency because the Cardinals went ahead and traded for DeAndre Hopkins, didn't give up all that much either. And DeAndre Hopkins is still a top five, top three wide receiver across all formats. He's pretty much proven that regardless of who is throwing him the football, that he can get it done. He got it done with Deshaun Watson and with guys beforehand. We continue to think he will get it done in 2020 with Kyler Murray. In our eyes, not that much drop off between Deshaun Watson and Kyler Murray as throwers of the football. So we still think that DeAndre Hopkins will maintain the type of upside that he had in Houston for the most part now, uh, even with him being in Arizona. And there's also some other really nice complimentary pieces other than DeAndre Hopkins. You've got Christian Kirk. You've still got Larry Fitzgerald. These guys might not necessarily be must-target fantasy wide receivers, but they so help Kyler Murray as far as his growth and his potential on a week-to-week basis is concerned. And there's going to be multiple times where one of those guys blows up because of the coverages that DeAndre Hopkins garners. So that's something to get really excited about. Then we look at the running back situation. Tight end, there's not really too much to discuss here. So that's why we go to running back directly. And you've got one Kenyon Drake. No more David Johnson. He is now in Houston. But Kenyon Drake showed us that following the trade from the Dolphins to the Cardinals last season, that he could absolutely fit into this offense as a do-it-all running back, as a pass catcher, as a pure rusher. And his ADP reflects that this year. The belief is there. He is a top 10 running back, especially in PPR formats. We believe he will be the RB1 for the Arizona Cardinals. 
and we love the upside. We think that he's going to have a pretty high floor because, again, of what he can do as a pass catcher, specifically in PPR formats. He's got that Austin Eckler type of potential similar to last year, and we expect him to be the RB1 on this team. So all in all, you've got a top five type of fantasy quarterback in Kyler Murray. You've got a top five wide receiver in DeAndre Hopkins and a top 10 RB1 type of guy in Kenyon Drake. That's why we absolutely love the Cardinals this year. And finally, we have got the Dallas Cowboys. Starting at the quarterback position here, we've got Dak Prescott, who maybe there was no quarterback. They took a bigger step in their growth than what he did in 2019 as he was a top five fantasy quarterback and had major improvements as far as passing yards were concerned as well. Also offers some sneaky athleticism that he will be able to take advantage of playing behind that great offensive line which provides him a bunch of time to locate his numerous weapons. And speaking of those weapons, there might not be a NFL team with a better trio of wide receivers than the Dallas Cowboys. You've got Amari Cooper, a top 10 type of wide receiver in fantasy. You've got Michael Gallup, who has shown us that he can pick up the slack if Amari Cooper isn't producing like we saw last season. And then you've also arguably have the most gifted rookie wide receiver from this year's class in C.D. Lamb that the Dallas Cowboys were able to land. So a lot of depth there. Amari Cooper is the main guy, but afterwards, C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup both offer some very intriguing options as potential wide receiver twos. Now, at tight end, no more Jason Witten, but Blake Jarwin is a very intriguing tight end that we think can surprise some people. Not quite top 10 type of potential just because there are so many other pass catching options but with no more Jason Witten he can definitely fit that Jason Witten fantasy role type of tight end and definitely improve upon it as well and finally we get to the running back position which is the most loaded on this offense with Ezekiel Elliott a top three fantasy running back across all formats similar to to Dak Prescott. He plays behind one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Every single year when he's been on the field, he delivers another top five finished last season, and we anticipate that that will be the case again this year. You've also got a great backup in Tony Pollard, who has shown us that he can get it done if something happens to Ezekiel Elliott. And for anyone that's afraid that something potentially happens to Dak Prescott. The Cowboys also have a great backup in Andy Dalton that should continue to maintain the success of these offensive weapons. So it's tough not to really like what the Dallas Cowboys have going for them offensively. So with that, we finish up our look into these top must-own offenses for 2020 in fantasy football. And as always, let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree? Are there some other sleeper offenses that you're going to be targeting and investing picks in stock-wise this year, along with any other questions you guys might have? And another quick reminder, go ahead, check us out online at alldaypickskin.com, all new and updated website. It's got all this content and more exclusive pieces as well. Go ahead, check out the 2020 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. All the details are in the description. You can also get a copy of that online at alldaypigskin.com. And if you guys enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in future videos.